Surreal Gun said he'll put on a show and he delivered with a dominating performance over Derek Lewis, as a lot of people expected in this fight. Derek Lewis's big opportunity to win this was by timing some big mistake that Gan would make with that big right overhand of his. But Surreal Gan just controlled the fight from a distance entirely, and then the longer the fight went, the more he started to control the close range, which was a bit shocking whenever they clinched up with each other, like when he double fainted to get in close on Derek Lewis to throw in that right elbow over the top. It really started to throw more power into his shots, and it just showed that Derek Lewis was nowhere near Surreal Gan's level. And just like I've been saying for a while now, Surreal Gan is and always was Francis Ngannou's toughest challenge in this division. Surreal Gan's jab, one of the best weapons in the heavyweight division. He has the best jab I have seen in this weight class. Controlling from a distance, just so snappy and fast, accurately pinpointing Lewis's eye multiple times in the fight and actually hurt Derek Lewis, rocked him a few times with that jab. The ending sequence started off of that jab, caused Derek Lewis to back up into the corner and also stunned Derek Lewis enough to allow Surbelgan to line up an uppercut which even further damaged Derek Lewis. And not only that, he dropped Derek Lewis with a right hook that only landed with the forearm. I think we have underestimated Surreal Gan's power. He definitely has the kind of power to hurt his opponents and back them away and stun them and all sort of stuff. So that is something that we learned in this fight. Surreal Gan is more powerful than we thought. But the things that we always knew about Surreal Gan, how technical he is, his defense, his offense, everything he does was just way too far ahead for Derek Lewis to ever catch up. Gan's defense, specifically focusing on that right hand from Derek Lewis, was perfect in this fight always picking up his left guard and always trying to duck under it. Lewis never landed one right hand on him the entire time. And this is not only from a distance, it's even when Cyril Gan got in a bit too close for comfort, which he didn't even need to do necessarily when he was offensive. Honestly, putting himself in harm's way that he didn't need to do. Cyril Gan was just simply winning the fight, using his distance striking. He didn't need to do anything else in order to win this. He could have went all the way to a decision doing what he was doing for the first two rounds. Jabbing from a distance, front kicks, body kicks, low kicks, he didn't even need all the feints that he threw out there. Just the naked strikes and the speed advantage that he had was enough to trump Derek Lewis in almost every single exchange. That is how much of a skill gap there was in this fight. That simply just shooting out naked jabs from a distance was enough to catch Derek Lewis off guard every single time. The low kicks as well, there were plenty of low kicks that had no setup, they were just naked, and Gan was landing those. All while Derek Lewis was only throwing like four things in this fight. The right round kick, the left round kick, the right overhand, and setting up with a left hook. That was pretty much it. All of his attacks were moving forward in one trajectory with not much of a setup behind anything he was doing. He was trying to attack from a far distance that Gan had control of. It's hard to attack from such a far range when your opponent has control of that range. Using feints and such in order to manipulate the space that your opponent controls. You can't just simply dart out there from a distance and catch your opponent when they're using that range against you. And not only that, there were moments in the fight where Derek Lewis had Surreal Gan backing up, which is something that he needed to do. He needed to trap the mouse in order to catch it. For an example, he would use his feints to mask in that power that he has. And Surreal Gan, of course, is going to respect Derek Lewis's power, so he's going to move if Lewis is fainting. And when he got Surreal Gan to move heavily to one direction, Derek Lewis just let him get away every single time. Every time he got Gan moving back, and Gan had to then move off in a lateral angle to get away from the cage as well as Derek Lewis's power, Lewis did not cut off the cage at all. He just allowed Gan to move around. I mean, Lewis actually had very good feints. He had feints that got Surreal Gan to react heavy to them, to the point where there were times where he would literally turn his back and run away. That is one of the most vulnerable targets you can ever get on an opponent. And if Derek Lewis actually cut him off, there was a high probability that he would have landed something big on Surreal Gan when Gan had his back to him. And the big right hand that Lewis had, Surreal Gan was on it the entire fight. Either he was slipping it, ducking under it, or he was hopping back away from the tell. Whenever Derek Lewis moved forward, not using a kick, he always knew it was going to be a right hand. He always knew there was something to set it up or Lewis was just going to wing it out there. And you probably remember a few times where Surreal Gan would hop back literally like jump backwards away from that right hand, completely getting away from Lewis's range. And if Lewis was still going to throw it out there, he would be in danger of getting countered. And this did happen one time in the fight where Gan almost landed his check right hook, 
And what I have to say is Surreal Gun has probably the best jab in the heavyweight division. Many of those jabs were actually catching Derek Lewis in the eye. Every single time Derek Lewis grabbed his eye in the fight, it was because of a jab, not because of a poke. But it was Derek Lewis who poked Surreal Gun twice in the fight. Surreal Gun never poked Derek Lewis. I know some people were saying that, you know, Derek Lewis got poked and that's what started the finish and all that stuff. No, every single time it was that lightning quick jab. But there was one moment in the fight, three minutes and six seconds of the second round where Derek Lewis threw a right high kick and Surreal Gun made the mistake of hopping back trying to get away from it but because he was still in range he had to block it as well while he's in the air and unbalanced he had to block the kick the impact of the arms because Surreal Gun was unbalanced caused him to switch stances and then he wanted to switch back into his southpaw stance in this moment Derek Lewis was able to retract the kick he could have engaged Surreal Gun here it was a very vulnerable state for Surreal Gun and Derek Lewis had a chance here to make something happen but for many times in the fight he just allows Surreal Gun to get away with many different things and was only looking for that one hitter quitter, that home run knockout the entire fight. But against such a technical and fast fighter like Surreal Gan, it's just not going to happen like that. You got to make things work. But then when we talk about Surreal Gan, everything he did in this fight, I mean, it was such a treat to watch. For an example, he'll throw out two switch kicks to the leg before he threw any kicks to the leg, but they were very, very light. He wanted to see if Derek Lewis would check him or what his response would be. Lewis gave no response at all. No check, no right hand, nothing to engage with, and nothing to defend. And this showed the surreal gun that kicks were there all night for him. Downloaded the data and went to it a lot more in the fight, really damaging Derek Lewis's leg later in the fight. And you'll see sometimes where Derek Lewis will look like he was going to engage after Gan threw his leg kick. Gan knew what it was going to be. He knew it was going to be a big right hand so every single time he put up a tight left guard surreal gun will also have this lolling feint with his right hand and southpaw circling it around in front of Derek lewis and you'll see when he brings it out wide Derek lewis's reaction to it was to also open up his guard and bring his left hand wide as well to contest surreal gun this gave surreal gun the opening down the center for that lightning jab Surogan also had many different kind of feints. He would feint up high with his hands in order to get Lewis's attention up high so he can go down with the leg kick hard. Because of all the leg kicks landing, Derek Lewis started to respect it. So Surogan would fake a leg kick by shifting his hips to open up Derek Lewis for a right overhand over the top. I also love some of Surogan's work in the clinch. He landed that reverse upward elbow, similar to the way that Yair Rodriguez knocked out the Korean zombie. I mean, what heavyweight throws this? He gets Derek Lewis's attention from the blow, opened up the clinch for Surreal Gan to land another elbow over the top. And the reason why this worked so well was because Derek Lewis had a single collar on the left side. So when Surreal Gan is ducking his head to throw that reverse elbow, he causes Derek Lewis, who's trying to keep that grip, to fall into it, right? His body falls wherever Surreal Gan's body is going. And that puts him right into that elbow. Intelligent stuff by Surreal Gan. And then we move to 3 minutes and 20 seconds of that third round. This was an interesting exchange. Both in opposite stances, Surreal Gan's in southpaw, and Derek Lewis is trying to set up that right hand of his. He comes in with a wider left hook to find the range and get the opponent on the center for his right hand to land. While he's trying to box in Surreal Gan with the left hook, Gan attacks him with a straighter right jab. Straight punch beat looping punch, but he dropped the jab, leaving an opening for Derek Lewis to connect with that left hand. But even still, even though Derek Lewis landed, here, Surreal Gun was still aware of what was coming next. He was always aware that the right hand was coming at him, no matter what would happen. So he brings his head away from that side and drills his head right into Derek Lewis's left shoulder, allowing himself to clinch up and get that right hand to miss, tying up Derek Lewis. And with that left single collar, he pulls Derek Lewis to his left side and pushes away. He had a great counter here, a great stop in the action, neutralizing the right hand, and then a great escape as well. The defense of Surreal Real gone besides dropping that jab was impeccable here and not only that toward the finish of the fight they disengage from the clinch and Derek Lewis is coming in with another left hook lining up his right hand notice that surreal gun only puts up his left hand this here is interesting because it shows you that there could have been moments if Derek Lewis used feints more different kind of footwork and angles and such he could have found left hands instead of right hands that he was over committing with this showed here that surreal gun was solely focused on the right hands from Derek Lewis he put up his left guard when there was no right hand coming at him. He just saw Derek Lewis move forward, so he automatically thought that there was going to be a right hand. If Derek Lewis played it a little bit different in this fight, he could have probably found openings where Surreal Gan would defend with the left guard, but found his left hook to connect, or left uppercut, or even a jab, using his left hand a lot more. But in this sequence here, with the defenseless right side of him, he was still able to duck under the punch, 
able to see it coming from that wide angle. If Derek Lewis actually threw this a lot shorter and tighter, he would have landed this on Surreal Gone. Gone would not be able to see it as well, therefore not ducking his head as fast as he did. But with that, Derek Lewis falls up the single collar for the right uppercut, looking for that big right hand. The left guard of Surreal Gone never leaves his side and allows him to block the uppercut while Derek Lewis was momentarily defenseless, still looking for only offense. This showed a difference in mindset between the two fighters. Surreal Gan is always there, offensively and defensively. He's always there to deliver with either skill, while Derek Lewis necessarily isn't. He's either thinking only offense or only defense. And Surreal Gan lands a right hook, but with his forearm. This was enough to drop Derek Lewis. From jabs to this right hook, it has shown that we have underestimated Surreal Gan's power. And the guys that he did not hurt with these shots probably have a better chin than we gave him credit for. And that is the end of the breakdown. Surreal Gan looked amazing tonight it was kind of weird to hear the crowd booing him after that performance i mean he finished Derek lewis a lot of people did not think he would have tko Derek lewis especially the way he did and he made the fight look super easy surreal gun's a nice guy he deserved the crowd to applaud him and he's one of the best heavyweights in the world he may be the best heavyweight in the world we're gonna see when he goes and fights his former teammate francis Ngannou. i've been saying for a while that surreal gun may be the guy to beat francis Ngannou, and it looks like we're gonna see if that comes into fruition so, hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown. If you did, make sure to thumbs up, drop a comment, subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.